Perhaps the most important thing that you need to do when you deal with ransomware and phishing is uh, to really detect the minute that the user clicks and begins to be a victim of uh, a phishing attack. So as, as soon as the rod begins to move, you need to, at that particular moment, detect that that has happened and get that machine with that compromise of the network fast. Otherwise, it's going to cost you money because it's going to propagate to file servers and, and, and file shares. And there's another video in this series that will show you how you detect that when even when that happens. But the important thing is to get that victim's machine immediately out of the uh, network. In other videos, we have shown how with uh, Threat intelligence, real-time uh, feeds uh, via the RESTful APIs like fishme.com into Curator, it is very easy to detect the minute that an, a malicious IP is being seen play or when people go into a URL that is that is bad, and we can detect that. The problem with that is that the bad guys change those IP addresses and those URLs quite often. What the bad guys do not do at least not often, is they don't change the malicious file of artifact, the PDF or whatever it is that got the, 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 the ransomware installed on the machine. So if we can detect malicious files being present, and we know that we can do that by getting the hash of the particular file or artifact that is coming, we can detect when phishing is happening. But the problem is that the hashes is not something like the source IP or the destination port of this and that that you can get from the headers or the payload. You actually need to calculate, to compute those hashes. And you know, how do you do that when the when the traffic is actually coming and, and, and the traffic for the whole enterprise is actually coming? That, that's the traditional, you know, the proverbial needle in the haystack. It's actually once the needle gets into the haystack, uh, it's very uh, is very hard to uh, to detect it. And, and when you have the traditional uh, type of forensic, uh, it's really too late with the traditional uh, mechanism of doing of doing that. So you can go actually with forensic and find the, the actual hash that what happened, but it will be too late. By that time, the, the, the malware has propagated all over the place. Entering curator network insights. Think of it as, you know, like a harvesting machine that as the, as, as the hay is coming into the stack, Q&I is calculating not only hashes from files and artifacts going into, into the actual uh, network, but also 30 other pieces of very important data. And there's a separate video that, uh, where that is actually shown. But, but Q&I can actually detect that hash, that's malicious files, the minute it's traversing the network. What we're going to be demoing next. So we have our Q&I box added into our uh, demo system. We have a machine that is going to be actually victim of the phishing. We're going to replay a massive two gigabyte uh, full pickup traffic, and it's going to, Q and I is going to process that. It's going to be calculating many things among them the hashes of all the uh, artifacts that goes through the network, and then we have a rule in Curator that is going to fire an offense when a malicious uh, hash is being found that is in a reference set that is up to the minute being updated by the fishme.com feed that we have via RESTful API uh, on the subscription that I have here on the system. So fishme is very good in getting the not only the IP addresses and the URLs, but also the hash of the of the malicious artifacts in there. So the minute that that traverses our network, QNI is going to calculate the hash. It's going to curator is going to have the offense at fire. But what we're going to be doing differently here is we're going to be asking Big Fix when the offense fire to get that machine, which is this address in here, off the network immediately, so it doesn't propagate any of that uh, malware anywhere else. And the, the guy will be alerted, UBA will be alerted about this guy being, being risky, it's, it's, it's a, a problem. And, and we are also gonna be showing, uh, we actually show that in another video, but we will make another one, in which we show that we tell the uh, 
IPS and or firewall to actually block anything that comes from the IP where these machines get actually get actually uh, infected. So here in the uh, Big Fix console, we can see that machine, which is uh, that address in here. Uh, we see that there's no action history. We're going to see that when we uh, ask it to be taken out of the network, we'll see actions uh, coming here, one per every one of the instances that we find, the occurrence uh, of, uh, of that particular hash. And Curator is going to, uh, from the IP address, uh, it knows in the asset database, which is the Big Fix ID, which is this number that we see in here. And that's what we're going to be using when we tell Big Fix, hey, take that Big Fix ID, whoever had that Big Fix ID, and get it out of the network. So this is the Windows 7 machine. And as we can see, it can actually pin the outside world. We're going to pin the uh, Google's uh, DNS uh, resolver. And, you know, the machine can connect to the outside world. So here in Korea, in the UBA, we don't have much activity going uh, in the offenses. We have cleaned everything up, so we don't have any offenses. And in the network traffic, uh, we're going to be watching it here, replaying uh, that uh, massive uh, uh, two gigabyte uh, pickup traffic with the malicious uh, component in it. So here we see that traffic uh, massively coming in here. And I want to show you a search that I put here, a very simple search that shows me the hashes in real time. This is what q and is actually one of the many things that q and can actually do. So as you see, this is not on the payload, on the header. This is something that gets computed from every artifact, not just files, but any, any artifact that is going, q and is actually getting the, the hashes. And Curator now has a rule that is checking on more on these hashes, whether they are in my fishme.com reference set. So here we see where I installed the, the fishme.com uh, application and let's see some of the uh, reference sets that that application not only adds to it but constantly is feeding it, feeding them with, with up-to-the-date, uh, you know, uh, hashes, URLs uh, and uh, an IP addresses of uh, malicious uh, sites. So here we can see, you know, what we got uh, uh, today from from that feed and, and these reference sets get actually populated and the rules are checking on them. And as we can see here, several offenses actually fire out of that malicious traffic and you see that uh, this one actually is one that comes by default uh, from Curator, uh, one of the packages that we, we can add to it uh, from the App Exchange and this one actually detected from the uh, X4 feed that there's also some uh, botnet command and control, but the the, the one that we uh, are interested in showing here specifically for FishMe is uh, this particular offense. And if we actually we see that right now we have six events and probably there are going to be uh, more coming. And when we display the rules that contributed to this particular offense, we have that that uh, RFISI, but it, this is the the phishing uh, detection. Which basically is saying, well, when the file hash <laughs> that I get with that beautiful QNI addition to Curator is in any of these, uh, 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 on, is any one of these uh, component that I have on that fishme.com uh, hashes, fire an offense. And the, that offense is not only, you see here in the in description that it contributes with a thousand points into the UBA. But most importantly, is executing a custom action with this uh, big fit quarantine. And there's going to be a subsequent video that goes into more details and even uh, shows you a, a link where you can actually uh, download this uh, very useful uh, shell script that was created by uh, Bruno Silva and uh, also uh, Jago uh, help us tremendously uh, uh, in putting all this together very quickly. I just refresh the, the the offense and we see 12 events. Let's actually go into uh, Big Fix and see what's uh, going on there or to the Big Fix console. And we actually see that, that those uh, uh, those requests in, for Big Fix to quarantine the particular uh, owner of that Big Fix ID, which corresponds to the IP that we detected, uh, has actually been and. Uh, this, you, you saw another request uh, coming here. Let's go and see what happened on the Windows machine, on the Windows 7 machine. If we try to ping from 8.8.8 .8 .8 here, as we were doing before, we get 
that this machine is completely out of the network, it cannot hurt others with that malware propagation.